smoke session today we will be doing a let's talk about it okay so i got something to talk about and today's topic will be a little deeper than usual so we're gonna go ahead and dive in we're gonna go ahead and talk about it so go ahead and get y'all blunts y'all bonds tea if you're sipping on coffee if you're watching this in the morning um if y'all got some popcorn some snacks whatever y'all got go ahead and gather it up because we're gonna go ahead and spark up and talk about it so I got me a blunt, of course, I always got a blunt. So let's go ahead and spark up. so let's talk about it so today's topic will be grief trauma depression coping dealing with um i don't really know exactly where this video is gonna go but i know that i want to just talk about how i've gone through like the different stages of grief um how I'm still continuing to go through them, how it's a never ending cycle. And honestly, how it's changed my life. Like going through grief, going through this shit. Yeah, so let's talk about it. So first off, I wanna say, I, I dealt with a lot of guilt when it came when it comes to grieving, um, for my own specific reasons that I have not talked about publicly, but of course I deal with my own guilt when it comes to losing my partner. Um, I feel like everybody kind of always thinks about like well what could i have done like could i have called them could i have stopped them what would i have done if i was with them um you know another thing that i feel like i deal with is feeling like i'm too happy or i'm too peaceful or like I shouldn't be moving on with my life like okay so let me kind of break it down for y'all as y'all know I lost a significant other if you are new to this channel and you do not know I'm Caprice and I lost my spouse Jonathan I lost him back in May so for me because we were dealing with so much throughout our relationship so much trauma so much pain so much hurt and abuse I feel like I held on to anger and honestly anger helped me heal like <laughs> a woman came to the hospital um, and I feel like if that didn't happen I feel like I would have been more sad but just knowing that like things weren't good when he was alive that helped me so I have anger and when I think about all the mothers who have lost their one-year-old or eight-year-old to cancer people who have lost siblings you know your best fucking friend it's a lot of people in my city losing people and posting them and for me it's like well I have anger you know me and my nigga was into it when he died so I'm not happy that he died, but I'm at peace with him dying because I know what he was going through. 
he wasn't happy. He was depressed. He said it all the time. I don't want to be here no more. I don't understand why I'm here. But for other people who haven't experienced that, I be feeling bad. Like, how? Like, I would question why so much, you know? And I feel like for my... For what I went through, I don't really question why anymore because... At the end of the day, I've kind of accepted things. I've accepted that he wasn't happy here, you know? But for people who be like, this person was always happy and loving on everybody and did everything for everybody. And this person was a joy to everybody life and never had a bad day and da da da. I'm like, damn. You know, like, how do you get over that shit? So I feel like it kind of forces me to have a little bit of guilt when it comes to like the fact that I just am still living life. Like I'm still going through shit, I still cry, I still feel a type of way, but I just feel like I don't have it as bad as other people. And that leaves me feeling guilty, you know? And then I feel like I'm always wondering like, where is Jonathan? Like what he thinking or what he feeling or what he got going on? Like did he um reincarnate is he another person now is he an animal is he in heaven is he with our children is he at peace like i feel like a lot of times grief just kind of leaves me confused it leaves me confused another part of grief for me has been like not feeling sorry for myself like i feel like every time i get down on myself it's just like bro i'm living like i'm living i'm alive i get to do shit i get to go places i get to do everything that me and jonathan said we was gonna do that's another part of it like it make me want to go so much harder it make me want to do every single thing that me and jonathan said we was gonna do whether it's that family that I want. We try so hard to have kids. So much so that we had three miscarriages. I feel like deep down. Jonathan the only person who really knew. How bad I wanted a baby. Like. How bad I want to be a mother. How bad I want to be a wife. How bad. Being a family. Healing black families is a part of my mission. Like. If didn't nobody know that kind of shit about me, Jonathan knew. Like, Jonathan was my confidant. He was my best friend. He was the person that I talked to about my mental illness, about the shit that I couldn't talk to my parents about, about the shit Kamaya was too young to understand. He watched me go through plenty of different friendships, you know, in friendships, start friendships, continue friendships, rekindle friendships. Like, he's watched me through so much. So in my mind, it's like, I know that he, he knows my deepest desires. And I feel like he will want me to live them. Like, it's crazy because the last couple of days I've been thinking about him and like all the clothes that he bought. Like he used to buy shit and hide it from me because I'm such a, I'm cheap. But I never felt no type of way about him spending money on himself. He just thought that I cared. Me, I want our bills to be paid, but I still want you to treat yourself to him. He felt bad about treating himself if our bills wasn't paid. Me, I don't give a fuck. I'm gonna treat myself before I pay a bill. So in my mind, I just be thinking about all the times he's bought shit and like saved the outfits and been like, baby, I'm gonna wear this for a day or I'm gonna wear this for a music video. And then he died and it's just like all this shit is just like in a closet somewhere. You know, in, in a Drake song, in that Elevate song, he like, I remember saving bottles of champagne for a special occasion. You know, I could engage anything being better than what it is right now. And it's like now, I can imagine shit being better. Like I can I can still see all the shit that me and him talked about. I can see it even more vividly now. So now I feel obligated 
to do all of that shit or to walk in all of that shit. A lot of times I feel like I'll just never get answers to certain shit that I still think about. Certain questions about our relationship, certain things. Like sometimes I feel like I go back and forth. Like sometimes I'll have days where I'm like, Jonathan really did not love me, bro. Like when I when I go down in my spirals and thinking about him, it just be like all the bad shit he did to me. Like, bro, that nigga could not have possibly loved me. But then it be some days where I'll be like, that man loved this shit out of me. Some days I really see him. I see all the shit that I wish I could have seen when he was alive. And some days I can really see shit for what it is or what it was. Like, shit wasn't gonna get better or shit really was fucked up or niggas really was cheating or we really did get to a bad point. I really was a bitch. Like, different shit like that, it do grief really kind of open your eyes up to all sides of the story um even ones that you wasn't aware of because i feel like even though we was in a relationship i don't feel like i saw all of him because communication is a thing and you gotta you really gotta communicate in a relationship in a friendship and you can't assume that you know what a person got going on you can't assume that a person know what you got going on and it just makes me grief makes me want to end arguments a lot faster grief makes me want to tell people how i feel to tell people when i'm upset to tell people when i'm proud of them when i'm excited when i'm happy and not feel bad about having bad days or feeling fucked up about certain things grief kind of makes me want to talk to people more about the shit that i go through i feel like when i first when everything first happened i didn't know who to trust it was like i was vulnerable so i wanted to trust everybody who was willing to reach out to me but grief also showed me that people don't care after a week or two after a month i'll say after a month after three months especially for nobody calling to check on you you know and nobody and grief kind of taught me that life goes on and that death is just a part of life. Like we, a lot of times, I feel like we feel bad for ourselves. Like we grieving our relationship with that person. We're grieving what that person did for us, whether it was give us comfort, give us love, be there for us, their laughter, their joy. But that person had an agreement with God. That person, I don't know why, but I've been, I feel like people know when they're going to die, bro. Like, I don't know if they get an inkling, a dream. But y'all ever feel like you know when you're going to have a bad day or you know when some shit is off? Like, everything that I've been watching or... Just the fact that I kept telling Jonathan, like, I kept telling him, like, bro, I feel like somebody in my family is gonna die. And he kept putting it off, he was like, mm hmm, mm hmm. It wasn't that he didn't care, but I don't know. And that's another thing, like, I wish I could talk to him, like, well, did you know, bro? Like, did you know you were gonna die? Like, sometimes I'm like, damn, my nigga must have been so brave. You know, like, being in that hospital fighting for his life and shit like that like, i just some days i wish i could just talk to him some days i wonder 
what life would be like with him here. Like I kind of create a fantasy. Like she would have been good. He would have got a job and da da da. And it's like then reality set in, and it's like, well, would that have been the case? Cause y'all know I was depressed and I was going through shit. I wasn't posting on here. I ain't had no job. I wasn't. I wasn't doing shit for real. Like I was just sad. And now it's like, damn, I'm really on my shit. I'm really like, I'm get pulling myself out of darkness. And it's like, would I have done that with him here? Or did he love me enough to like help me in a different way? We talked about that like a couple days before he passed, we did shrooms together. And um I had basically told him like I know why my babies died. Like I know what I, they sacrificed for me. They knew what I was going through at the time. They knew they knew more than I knew. And they sacrificed themselves for me. That's what love is. Love is being willing to sacrifice some shit. Whether it's for God, whether it's for your friendship, whether it's for your kids, whether it's for yourself, sometimes you gotta sacrifice sleep for that business. Like, you know, you gotta sacrifice for shit that you love. And we had that conversation. And sometimes I think about, like, what if he sacrificed himself for the people that he loves? Like, his mama, me, his baby. Like, what if he was like, damn, like, I be hurting people. I'm giving people drugs, my girl always mad at me, my mama always mad at me, you know, like, my friendships failing, niggas that I thought loved me, turning on me, like, a lot of shit in his life was going on, damn, my girl can't have my babies, like, he used to say that all the time, like, all my niggas having babies, or everybody having babies, why well, I can't have a baby, you know, so, I feel like grief kind of make me want to be better for the people that I've lost you know it kind of give me that drive and motivation and although grief has kind of grief one of the first lessons of grief was that life goes on like when Zion first died I feel like even though I had lost people in my family beforehand I was pretty young so I don't really remember how I took that probably not very well but I don't remember, so I obviously blocked it out. Um, but with Zion, that was the first person super close to me. That was my child. So, you know, he was my kid for four months. <laughs> he was in my belly for four months. So we grew a relationship, and he was something that I created out of love or out of sadness, out of desperation he was something that I created and that my body created and that me and another person coming together created the fact that I could the fact that I could create life was like whoa it had been so many years since I had Kamaya and even in my pregnancy with Kamaya I was so depressed and I was going through so much that I don't know if I sat up and thought that hey me and this man really made a life i really got a baby inside of me i really created life i wasn't as spiritual then so i didn't understand the value of what was happening and my baby sacrificed for me you know um so sometimes i do feel like what if jonathan just sacrificed for us for the people that he loved because looking back at certain letters and it just makes me more aware of how I treat other people. I feel like after after grief and even before grief, I was really, really selfish. I am really, really selfish. And I feel like that has just kind of come out of me not being selfish for so long and me kind of allowing people to hurt me and walk all over me. Um, it made me hard. It made me only care about me getting my way and grief just makes me see other people now. 
it makes me see past people's facade and past their mask like I know when people are hurting I know what it looks like because I've looked at my face I've looked at me hurting for months now I've put everything on Facebook everything is documented which I feel like has really helped me as well um I'm a person who journals, but being so depressed, I didn't have the mental capacity to pick up a pen. So being able to express my feelings and get them out was very helpful for me. I realized that I really didn't have one person who I could call. Like I could call my mom and vent to her about some stuff. Um, but me and my mom have two very different love languages. So grief just highlighted Jonathan's role in my life and like what he did for me and who he was to me um because I feel like when he was here so many what he wasn't doing was clouding a lot of what he was doing um so grief kind of just allowed me to have a different perspective or a different view um I feel like even though I lost my significant other, grief has kind of made me want to live more. Like it's made me want to just be everything that I, like it's, I don't want to leave nothing undone. Like when I look at my house, the kind of thing that I think about is like if I die today, like this would be what my mom or whoever loves me came into. This is what they would have to clean up. This is where they would find my information. This is what they would see. I feel like I'm I don't want to be angry, but I am angry. It's like I, I be, I'm a lot calmer now. Like the way that I handle emotions, just is like if I could lose somebody and bounce back and be okay. The shit that I'm going through, I can try not to worry about, or I can try not to stress about. becoming nonchalant but in a good way I feel like I'm just learning to accept shit for what it is like good or bad it's just like okay I don't know what God is doing but I know God is doing something like you know something I don't know what God is doing something. I think a lot of times I just think about him. You know, I just think about my kids and sometimes I feel bad like if I don't mention like if I if I see something that makes me think about one of my kids I feel like I gotta mention all of them I feel like I gotta mention Zion I feel like I gotta mention Cadence I feel like I gotta mention Rhythm I feel like I gotta mention Jonathan I feel like I'm constantly trying to keep up with a relationship with them even though they're not here anymore and sometimes I feel a lot of guilt when I don't think about them or if I'm busy living my life Like if I find myself like liking the text or like looking at a man Instagram and being like, oh, he's kind of fine. Like I'll be like, mm. like I'll hurry up and look at the number. And if it matches something that used to remind me of Jonathan, I'll be like, oh. you know, or I feel like I try not to talk about Jonathan around other people 
because I don't want to make other people sad or feel like, dang, you always talking about him. Like with dating, it's been hard because in telling somebody about yourself, something like this would come up and sometimes I find myself feeling like they're not going to want to hear about my ex. But deep down, I'd be like, if you supposed to be somebody that I'm supposed to be friends with or talking to, you gonna wanna know all of me. And that's something that really affected me and is affecting me and it's affecting how I'm gonna love you or how I'm gonna care about you. So if you don't allow me to talk about that, you may not be the person for me or you may not be the friend for me. Because even around other women, I don't always feel like I can talk about my grief or Sometimes I feel like I have to be in a positive energy in order to have friends or in order to have my friends want to go out with me or keep me. Um, grief has changed my life in so many ways. Having to just get back on my feet, not, like not having the energy to work, but kind of needing to work because I relied on my boyfriend to kind of pay our bills. That has been an ongoing struggle for me. I literally went from my man paying all of our bills. I'm talking rent, paying for laundry, um, paying for stuff around the house, buying our couch, like buying me clothes, shoes, buying Kamaya shit, like randomly taking her to the mall, buying her all the shit that I sold her no to. I realized how often I tell my daughter no now that Jonathan isn't here. It's like, dang, he used to always just be like, free. Just buy it. Like, just get it. And I'm like, dang, you really gonna buy that? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> you know, like, I... It also makes me kind of realize all the things that I want in my husband. You know, like, I want everything that I loved in Jonathan, but I don't want to compare my husband to him i want to find friendship in my husband it also makes me highlight all the things that jonathan wasn't and that he wouldn't be for me and it makes me realize that i still deserve all of those things um and just some of the conversations that we had before he passed he really did wish that he could be better for me so I feel like he will want me to stand up for myself. So he kind of gives me confidence. I feel like grief kind of forces me to not accept the bare minimum. Because it's like I did that already. And my man died. Like I didn't get nothing out of accepting the bare minimum. He never changed for me. He never. So I'm not going to keep living on potential. You know. So I feel like he kind of gave me self-worth. Value. You know, and it's not even just about Jonathan. I feel like a lot of times I kind of just, I don't ignore it, but it's like, I've all, I had miscarriages and sometimes I feel like, how do you, like other women who haven't maybe been through that aren't really going to understand that. So, um, with Zion birthday coming up, it's 11 11, so it'll be coming up next month, the beginning of next month. I just feel like this is gonna be the first year that I'm not with Jonathan celebrating our baby's birth and death day, you know. And then this year will be Rhythm's first year of us celebrating her birthday and death day, so it's just like. Will my husband understand? Like, will he get it? You know, a part of me feels like I have to grieve certain memories because he validated who I was in those delivery rooms. He validated those babies. <laughs> like, my mom never met my babies. Come on, never met the babies. So it's just kind of like they know the pictures, they know from FaceTime, but like, they wasn't there in that room. Jonathan was. He's not here anymore. So, I feel like in grieving, 
when you lose a person you're not just losing that person physically you're losing the relationship you're losing whatever they provided you with whether it be love a shoulder to cry on an ear laughter joy friendship love companionship you grieve who you was because you're no longer who you was when you lose a person you become a different person so not only are you grieving them you're grieving who you was when things were all good you getting to know you all over again you getting to know a version of you you never even thought you would ever meet so so like you 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 create a relationship with god because you're either going to ask God why or you're going to call on God either way. You're talking to God. So. I feel like grief has kind of sent me into a spiritual awakening. Another one. I feel like my connection to God has been. I've never prayed so much. I've never meditated so much. I even got back into journaling. My highs be different. Like, I want to talk to God. I want to live in my purpose. I want to walk in what I'm supposed to do now. Like, okay, somebody just woke up. So, I gotta go. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up, leave a comment down below. Share on all your social medias, and I am out of here, you guys.